Okay, so our story begins with a young trainer named Red, who travels all across the Kanto region fighting dangerous monsters, crime organizations, and eventually his lifelong rival, Blue, who he defeats to become the Pokemon League champion, thereby accomplishing his entire life's goal by the humble age of 11. Three years later, Team Rocket returns once again, but when we needed Red the most, he vanished, up into the mountains to live out his angsty middle school life loner phase. Thankfully, a new trainer rose up to defend the Kanto and Johto regions. Along the way, also coming across a Red Gyarados rampaging at the Lake of Rage. And wouldn't you believe it, that's the same Red Gyarados that we see on TV at the beginning of Diamond and Pearl. So we could just put these right there. Now, hold your horsies because we have to take a step back for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. These three games are supposed to take place around the same time as Generation 1, but the evidence for this isn't exactly stated by the games themselves. There are a few hints, like being able to trade between Generations 1 and 3, as well as having some coinciding events, but the strongest evidence comes from this now-deleted tweet by one of Game Freak's head writers, Toshinobu Matsumiya, which reveals the connection between Gens 1 and 3, as well as validating everything else that we've covered so far. Okay, now we can finally move on to Pokemon Black and White. After putting a stop to Pokemon Pita and their Bashonen Prince, our hero takes on the Unova Elite Four, with one of their members being the sleepy psychic trainer, Caitlyn. This is also the same Caitlyn that we see in Generations 4 and 2, but ambiguously older. How much older? I'm not too sure, but enough to say that from Generations 2 and 4 to 5, time has definitely moved forward. I guess. It can't be too long though, because two years later in Pokemon Black and White 2, we once again see our boys red and blue, and they still look like they literally haven't aged a day. Let's just put this mystery aside for now and move on to X and Y. Referring back to the old timeline tweet, we can see that X and Y is supposed to take place around the same time as Black and White 2, but it's not actually on the same timeline as the rest of the games, and that's thanks to the inclusion of every competitive battler's favorite game mechanic. <laughs> Mega Evolution. See, there's actually an alternate dimension that runs right alongside the main timeline where everything is exactly the same except... not. Characters look slightly different, Pokemon can Mega Evolve, and the story changes just enough to be sold as an entirely new game. This includes X and Y, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and presumably an alternate version of every other game. Because by the time we reach Sun and Moon, two games that also include Mega Evolution, we see that a bunch of characters from all the previous games have also arrived on the Alola Islands. Then there's the case of Annabelle, who's originally from Pokemon Emerald and doesn't actually appear in Omega Ruby Alpha Alpha Sapphire. In her case, she was magically sent by a wormhole from the original timeline to the Mega timeline 10 years before the start of Sun and Moon, adding a bit more concrete proof to the whole split timeline theory. So, we know that Sun and Moon takes place on the Mega timeline, but as to when, that's where it starts to get misty. I mean, you got Red and Blue, who look like they're in their 20s, and then you got Wally from Generation 3, who looks like he just graduated Pokey Middle School. Let me remind you that Generation 1 and Generation 3 are both supposed to have taken place, like, more than a decade ago. Thankfully, we have this concept art of Grimsley, a member of the Unova Elite 4, which states that two years has passed since his last appearance in Black and White 2, and, by relation, also two years after X and Y. Okay, now we can finally go back and fill in the gaps between Generations 2, 4, and 5. We now know that Annabelle arrived in Alola 10 years before the start of Sun and Moon. So, from her original appearance in Generation 3 and her latest appearance in Generation 7, the total years have to equal at least 10. Using some quick math, we can calculate that the gap between Generations 2, 4, and 5 must equal at least 3 years. But that's a lot of at least. Shouldn't we be able to narrow that down a bit? Well, how about you ask that question to my good friend Porygon. Porygon's Pokédex entry in Sun and Moon states that it was created roughly 20 years ago. Of course, we know that Porygon already has to exist before Gens 1 and 3, as they are available to be caught in the wild areas of these games. So, the gap between Generations 3 and Generation 7 has to equal at least 10 years because Annabelle arrived in Alola 10 years before the start of Sun and Moon, but 
no more than 20 years because Porygon still needs to exist in the wild areas of Gens 1 and 3. Meaning that the time gap before Generation 5 has to equal between 3 and 13 years. <gasps> Now, if you've already left a comment about how this timeline is stupid and that I'm looking too far into things, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is the video is almost over. The bad news is it's only going to get more convoluted from this point on. See, when it comes to remakes and third versions, I generally assume them to be interchangeable with the games that they're originally based on, as the story typically doesn't stray far enough to where we couldn't still assume that they lead into each other. But recently, these games have been getting more and more lenient with their stories, like in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, where the story is almost exactly the same as Pokemon Yellow, except your rival gets replaced with a doorknob and Red and Blue are now NPCs, who finished their journey years ago. So now there's a Let's Go timeline. Cool, whatever, as long as there's not any more timelines we have to worry about, right? Wrong. In Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, there's an additional post-game where Giovanni brings back all the past evil team leaders for one Rainbow Grandpa Super Squad. But they're not from this timeline or any of the other timelines we've talked about. They're actually from alternate dimensions where the protagonist was defeated and they successfully carried out their evil schemes. So, yeah. It's not a timeline and it's not a time parallel line. It's a time... web? Okay, here's the moment that you've all been waiting for. Where does Sword and Shield take place on the Pokemon timeline? Well, the answer is... I, I don't know. I, I don't know. In fact, nobody knows. There's literally nothing we can use to connect it to previous generations, to the point where I'm pretty sure it's a conscious choice by Game Freak not to include any references to past games in an attempt to not step on their toes any more than they already have. Nobody wants another case of the 30-year-old but still looks 12 Wally. -E. So there you have it, the official, unofficial Pokemon timeline. None of this is actually endorsed by Nintendo, but it's what's commonly used to reference ages on popular sites like Bulbapedia. And so far, I haven't seen anyone put all the tiny crumbs of lore into one slightly cohesive timeline sandwich that doesn't take an hour to consume. Also, before anyone asks, no, I don't know where Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Rumble, and Pokemon Puzzle League take place on the timeline. But if you have any theories of your own, I'd love to discuss them in the comments, along with any recommendations you have for what games I should cover next. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.